Hello and welcome back to Descent Cycling Podcast for the review of stage number three of the 2021 Giro d'Italia, a stage uh, of medium mountain, potentially flat, uh, that took us from Biella to Canale, 190 kilometers, and a stage that saw the first breakaway win of this Giro d'Italia, and what a win by Taco van der Horn from Intermarché Wanty Gobert, getting not only their first win of the season, but their first win on a Grand Tour, and I mean, I don't think many people predicted Taco Van Eron to win. I know that you, Joe, predicted Quinton Hermans to win, so you got the team, uh, but I'm afraid you didn't get the rider. I mean, I'm still claiming it as a win for me. Um, I mean, Intermarché, no win yet this year, and I, ca- I called it, no. Um, I had no idea Van der Horn was going to win today. Quinton Hermans was up there, I think he was in the top 15, but what a win we saw today. Taco Van der Horn from the breakaway, they looked pretty doomed, to be fair. I mean, with over 20k to go, the gap was under a minute, around a minute, I think. Um, and it seems that it was just a matter of time before they'd be caught. But Van der Horn attacked Simon Pello, the last two riders in the final 10k. And it was a technical descent into the finish, which obviously made it a little more difficult uh, for the Peloton to catch Van der Horn. And yeah, I mean, what a win. I can't remember enjoying a breakaway win as much as that. It was an incredible watch. I, I absolutely love today's stage. It was a very decent win, even from a tactical standpoint, from Taco Van der Horn, who didn't do much um, relaying-wise in the breakaway, breakaway uh, in which we found Vincenzo Albanese, Alex Sigujar. Uh, we had two riders from Androni, uh, first one being Andriy Ponomar, the young Ukrainian, 18 years old, going for, uh, well, going for his first breakaway on the Grand Tour. And, um, I mean, the man that everyone knows, Simon Pelo, who was in the final two uh, riders of the breakaway. Um, alongside them, we found Samuel Rivi, Lars Vandenberg, and Samuel Zocarato. Uh, sorry. We had uh, three categorized climb in, uh, in this stage three. And it is Vincenzo Albanese, who was already uh, in uh, the uh, Malia Azzurra, that will uh, carry on wearing this jersey, having taken, um, I believe, most of the points today. Uh, but yeah, towards the end, uh, in the final hill um, that wasn't categorized, uh, the uh, the hill of Guarene, which um, had an intermediate sprint, Simon Pelo and Taco Van Ehorn, um left the group for dead. Uh, and then it was just a question of who was the strongest. And Taco Van Ehorn literally f- smoked Simon Pelo. I don't think there's any other word <laughs> I can use he got absolutely destroyed and then Taco managed to hold on even despite having a, a group of chasers with the likes of Judo Chicone, with the likes of Tony Galopin, uh coming quite close to, um, to the Dutchman. However, however, it was, uh, I mean, no worries for the rider from, uh, from, his, from uh, Intermarché who takes the win ahead of, um, I think, Davide Chimolai and Peter Sagan in third place. Uh, I mean, we said that the sprinters could potentially make it should the race not be too hard. I think the, the race was hard for 90% of the sprinting field. It really was. We saw almost all the pure sprinters drop, didn't we? Apart from, I mean, Sagan was there, not really a pure sprinter, but we saw Elia Viviani and Fernando Gaviria. Two surprises for me. He made it into that group. Giacomo Nizzolo wasn't there. He was dropped as well. Uh, so that maybe tells us a little of the form of those of those riders. Obviously, Caleb Ewan, Grunewagen, they were dropped. No surprises there. But I must say, Elia Viviani, he looks great at this race, Elia Viviani of Kovtis. If if he doesn't get a stage win at this point, I might be a bit surprised because he's riding very, very well. He was a little blocked in, I think, for the for the sprint yesterday too. He got third place there. Um, he showed good legs again today. And uh, Gaviria as well. We didn't get to see him in the sprint yesterday, but clearly he's not feeling too bad making it to the end today. Um, in that front group. So Gaviria and Viviani today have really put themselves atop the, the sprinting field as names to watch for sure, um, even in the, the more pure sprinting stages as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I had suspected that Viviani could potentially do well. I didn't think Gaviria would be there at all. No. Um, however, if we come back to our predictions from, uh, from yesterday, I had um, a lot of confidence in Matteo Moschetti I shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> Nizzolo, Nizzolo kind of surprised me. I expected him to do better, but he was at one point even being pushed by by uh, his own teammates trying to uh, maintain his position in the first group. Uh, I think he ends up 10 minutes behind. One rider uh, on which we had quite a few doubts was Tim Merlier and his ability to go with the hills. Uh, 
uh, he dropped as one of the first sprinters, I think, alongside Caleb Ewan, uh, and he finishes in the main group at so 15 minutes down. Um, so I think Tim Malaire is a pure sprinter uh, from uh, what we could see today. But yeah, if we go back to the uh, top 10, as I said, Shimola in second place, Petr Sagan in third, Vivian in fourth, Patrick Bevin in fifth, making this uh, two runners from Israel startup nation in the top five. I feel like Shimolai might have been the lead out for Bevin, but he ended up sprinting for himself. I'm not exactly sure how that went. Uh, then P6 for Gianni Vermeersch, not really making too much noise, but it's a top 10 for Alpes and Phoenix. Uh, Kuvira in seventh place, Alberto Betion from EF, Stefano Oldani in ninth place, and we do have an Italian rider from Trek to Gopher in the top 10. Trek very active today uh, in the Jacopo Mosca. Indeed, we do. So, an interesting sprint field. I mean, we have some classics guys really here. Betio, I'd say maybe Vermeersch as well. More classics guys. Mosca as well, not really known for his sprinting. Um, but we still have many capable sprinters here, um, despite not really having many of the pure sprinters. But today, it was all about Taco, wasn't it? Let's be real. Taco van der Horn, Intermarche's first win of the year, first Grand Tour win, Taco's first Grand Tour win as well. And what a way to do it. Going back to that image at the finish line, um, when Taco realised he'd done it, he sat up across the line, put his arms aloft, and you can see all the sprinters just coming over the crest as well, um, giving their all party celebrating. Unreal. Um, and yeah, Taco's day to day. Um, one of the um, attackers that tried to bridge the gap with uh, with Taco Van Leon was Julio Ticone, the right from Trek Superfredo. And um, we know that there is some questions about the uh, the leadership in said team. Bauke Molona said he was going for the stage. Uh, the main question mark, obviously, is for Vincenzo Nibali's health and form uh, following his uh, his injury on the on the right hand, I believe. So potentially, some people had seen Julio Ticone as the um, the GC leader of Trek. Um, I don't know what you make. Um, what, what did you make of it, Joe? But I feel like if he attacked today, I don't think he's the GC leader of Trek. I think he's there for the stages, and they have full trust in Vincenzo Nibali. I mean, it's a difficult one. I think the longer this race goes on, the more I feel Vincenzo Nibali is their GC GC leader. I don't think Balka Molma is their man. I'm pretty sure he said before the race that he is focusing on stage wins, and I believe that, to be fair. He's he's going to complete the Grand Slam if he gets uh, a Giro stage win this year of winning a stage at all the Grand Tours. So I think that's Molma's goal. Ciccone, he's too bad at time trialling. Let's be real. He'll lose three-plus minutes at least on the final day. So um, I can't see him realistically leading the GC either. So I guess if they have a GC leader, it's Vincenzo Nibali. But is that the right option for the Shark? I don't know. What do you think, Gil? Uh, I mean, I feel like I, when you have Vincenzo Nibali's career, when you've won all of the three Grand Tours, do you really care about like finishing sixth or seventh of, of, of the Giro? I don't know. Um I feel like we'll have the, the first answers at the end of the first week with the first mountain stage. If he does well, uh, then I think it's a viable shout to try to go for the shark. If he doesn't, I feel like the third week will have breakaway season with Chikone, Nibali and Molema in every single mountain stage. Sega Diala is going to be a trek day if Nibali is out of the GC. <laughs> So taking a look ahead to stage four now of the Giro d'Italia, we have easily the most difficult and challenging stage to date. Over 3,000 metres of climbing. We're heading from Piacenza to Sestola. And the first 80k are really relatively flat. And then we have the climbing that begins. Many short climbs, undulating terrain throughout. But really, the main effort tomorrow is the Colle Passerino coming in the final 10k Four and a half kilometers at nine and a half percent. That is a grueling, grueling leg sapping, you could say, Guillaume, a leg sapping climb right there. But the, the stage doesn't finish at the top of that climb. We have 2.5 kilometers. And I've done that 2.5K on Google Maps earlier today. It's a, it's a very technical run in. We've got downhill sections. We've got a, a quick punch up into the town of Sestola, where it's a very technical finish there. So... The stage doesn't finish on the Colle Passerino. We have quite a bit of racing still to go after that. Um, and it's going to be a really great stage. Difficult for the Peloton co to control as well. So, Guillaume, what are your thoughts ahead of this stage? It's a very interesting stage. Um, we have the first 80 kilometers, as I said, quite flat, very similar to today's stage. I think that's where we'll see a breakaway uh, being built up. Uh, then we have an intimate sprint in the first climb or so. Uh, I don't think we'll see any sprinters getting points, if I'm being realistic. I think we'll have a, 
a break of seven or eight riders. Um, so I think the sprinters are going to take this as a rest day. Um, we have, I believe, 18 points uh, to be given on the first two climbs and uh, we'll have most likely, a, well, we could have a new, um, a new Maliar uh, Azura comes the end of the stage should um, Albanese not go in the breakaway. I think he will, though, to try and defend mm -hmm. uh, his yeah. precious jersey. Uh, but then, yeah, I think from Fanano to the, the summit of Di Cole Passerino, we're going to have uh, basically a sprint, in my opinion, 4.3k at 10%. Uh, and then, if you, well, for the riders that goes uh, like across the summit, you're going to need to have some legs to carry on for the last two kilometers. You've said it's a very technical portion. Uh, I haven't seen it on Google Maps, uh, but I'm going to take my word for it. Uh, <laughs> and you're going to need to have the legs because from the profile alone, it seems like we have at least a kilometer of of like false flats. And it might not seem like anything, but after 180 kilometers, uh, I believe that you will feel, feel it in the legs, especially if you've attacked in the Cole Passerino. So yeah, um, I think it's going to be a big day. Is it going to be the first day for the GC riders? I'm not so sure, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if someone once again like Dan Martin have backed. I mean, I did back him for today's stage. He didn't, he didn't do much, but it could be once again a stage that suits him. Could be for sure. I think we also have some pretty tricky weather conditions tomorrow. I think we'll have some rain and some strong winds as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see about that, though, which could also add to uh to the uh offering on tomorrow's stage and i think it's going to be a great stage i think that final climb nine and a half percent for four and a half k that cannot be underestimated at all that is going to be a really difficult effort and i'm sure we will see some differences made among the gc favorites but i'm not sure myself if it's going to be a stage win for the gc guys what do you think do you think think this could be another breakaway day Maybe not the actual breakaway, like the breakaway that started from kilometer zero, but a group of riders that saw an opportunity and figured that the peloton or the break, the GC guys wouldn't use all of their energy. Um, kind of similar to the the chase group that that went today with uh, Chicone and Galopin. We could see uh, a group like this, um, uh, maybe like a Clément Champoussin could potentially try to do something. He won't be a threat GC wise, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I am not very um, confident on my predictions right now. So uh, I will <laughs> let you take that away. And I'm going to make some research first. So I've got a few names I'm looking at for tomorrow's stage. I really don't think the GC guys will take the stage win. I think it's going to be difficult to control, to be honest. I think uh, we may see the early breakaway or, like you said, Guillaume, some later attacks take the stage that don't potentially come from the real GC favourites. So the guys I'm looking at, Felix Groschartner of Bora Hansgrohe, he lost nine minutes today and uh, he showed to be in great form at the Tour of the Alps. I think Groschartner, he's going to be my pick for tomorrow's stage uh, because of that time loss, essentially, from today's stage because he we know he's in good form from the Alps and I think uh, he should be let off the leash with nine minutes lost in the GC. Another rider as well, who I think will be free to attack is Simon Carr of EF Education Nippo. Again, like Groschartner, he's lost nine minutes in the GC. So I feel like he's going to be free to move as well. So Groschartner, Simon Carr, there are some names for, from me to watch tomorrow. Maybe even, we mentioned Balko Molma earlier in the pod, maybe even his teammate, Emmanuel Gebra Gazabier. Have I have I nailed that, Guillaume? I think I think he could be another shout for the breakaway. So um yeah, we'll see. We'll see if if he's strong enough to win the stage. But um yeah, would you rate, would you rate my pronunciation game right there, Guillaume? Uh, I mean, I'm not fluent in Eritrean, but I believe that was top tier. So yeah, my final pick tomorrow will be Felix Groschartner. I feel like he'll be he'll be free to make a move. He can win maybe even solo or with a uh, a reduced sprint from a few guys. So yeah, I'll go with Groschartner for tomorrow's stage, Guillaume. You got any thoughts? Uh, I mean, I was also looking at some of the riders that lost some time today. The first name that sprung to mind was Thomas de Rent. Uh, he lost. I think 10 and a half minutes today. It's a stage that suits him. Uh, now, whether he has the legs in this early Giro, I'm not so sure. Uh, but I believe we could definitely see him in the breakaway. Um, maybe not winning it, but I, th I think he'll be on the attack. Um, and maybe someone like Martin Dina going for the k points. I mean, I've backed him since day one. I, <laughs> I have to, to, to stick with him. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, I don't think the, uh, the GC guys would, um, would go for it. I tend to agree with it. Uh, one rider, though, that seemed to be very, very good on the Tour of the Alps 
and on this early Giro is Yanni Moscon. And I think if he goes in the breakaway, the team Ineos won't have to, uh, what well, won't have to do the race behind because they'll have someone ahead. They don't have to uh, protect, quote unquote, the, the jersey of, um, of Filippo Ganna. So we could see, I believe, um, someone like Moscon, I said Clément Champoussin, could see him as well, uh, but maybe a bit too early for, uh, for him as well. Uh, I don't really think Simon Carr is going to be in my picks. Uh, you, you, you've mentioned him. He's not a, a name that sprung to my knees there. Uh, and then anyone from the Canuck, I guess, maybe like a Mikel Frolich Honore could suit him as well if it's in a breakaway. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe we won't have a battle for the GC, at least not for the win. Maybe we'll have a few riders trying to attack in a few seconds here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think they'll be the ones taking the stage. So if I had to go for a winner to the, tomorrow, uh, I'll go that the winner of stage four of the Giro d'Italia between Piacenza and Sestola, really building it up because I still yeah. have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with... Uh, mm, uh, Yanni Moscon. Yanni Moscon. Yeah, my, go my, on. My, my. I say, on Moscon, I would probably think there's too much steep climbing i think that final climb is just going to be for the pure climbers to me or the or the purer punches um so guys like moscon even to Ghent as well we know he's a he's a breakaway god but is it going to be too steep for him is my my worry there so i'll give a i'll give a podium prediction gil uh whilst you prepare yours but we'll try and get if one of us nail a podium prediction throughout this giro i think we'll be very happy but i'll go with groschartner for the win Davide Formolo second, and I'll go Ruben Guerrero in third place for EF. That's my um, that's my podium. We'll see how that goes, though. Uh, and I'm going to go with Gianni uh, Moscon, Diego Ulissi, and Rudy Mollard for my top three. There we go. Predictions are in, guys. We'll see um, if any of us have nailed that tomorrow. It's probably going to be a completely different day. We'll see Remco Evanapool take two minutes on all the other GC guys um, <laughs> and we'll be proven to be absolute fools. So we'll see how that goes, Guillaume. Oh, we will. I mean, if, if Remco wins, then I think it clearly showcases that we should stick to PCM and stop being like podcasters. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But that, nevertheless, is going to be the end of this podcast. We do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, If you did, please make sure to uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on other streaming platforms, then make sure to follow the podcast over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anything you're listening, podcast. Uh, And we will see you tomorrow for the review of stage four of the 2021 Giro. But from myself, enjoy this goodbye. Joe, a final word, potentially? It's Felix time. It's Felix time. Arrivederci.